From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! There are those who are destroying our country. Whoever they are, we will not surrender to them. We have no choice but to defend ourselves and our country. They are not Taliban, they are terrorists. Our men in Kandahar. A new expose links a U.S. backed warlord in Afghanistan to major human rights abuses, including killings and torture. We'll speak with the reporter who broke the story in the Atlantic magazine, Matthew Akins. Then, rain or shine, snow or sleet. But will your mail service survive post office budget cuts? It is no exaggeration to say that we are radically realigning the way that we process mail, the way that we deliver mail and that we, the way that we operate our retail network. We're doing this in response to a changing marketplace. Tens of thousands of job cuts. Your mail only five days a week? Is there a manufactured crisis? Who's behind the effort to privatize the Postal Service? We'll host a debate. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Forces loyal to Muammar Gaddafi have held off an advance by interim government forces into the center of Sert, Gaddafi's hometown. Sert remains one of the last bastions of supporters of the ousted Libyan leader. Forces allied with the National Transitional Council broke weeks of resistance from Gaddafi loyalists to enter Sert in recent days, but heavy gunfire has prevented them from reaching the city center. Humanitarian organizations have raised the alarm over conditions for civilians in Sert and in the second program. Gaddafi bastion, the desert outpost of Bani Walid, southeast of Tripoli. The Obama administration's announced plans to sell $53 million worth of military equipment to Bahrain just months after the Gulf state brutally cracked down on Shiite protesters. The proposed sale includes bunker buster missiles, armored vehicles, and wire guided missiles. Maria McFarland of Human Rights Watch criticized the arms deal. McFarland said, quote, this is exactly the wrong move after Bahrain brutally suppressed protests and is carrying out a relentless campaign of retribution against its critics. Papers filed late Monday night reveal the Obama administration's refusing to release photos and videos of a dead Osama bin Laden following a Navy SEAL raid in the Pakistani town of Abbottabad in May of this year. According to CIA National Clandestine Service Director John Bennett, the intelligence agency has 52 photos and or video recordings of the slain al-Qaeda leader. The imagery is reportedly classified as top secret, and the Obama administration says its release would reveal military and intelligence secrets and could lead to violence against U.S. personnel. Pakistan's renowned cricketer-turned-politician Imran Khan said Monday he believes Pakistan's main intelligence agency, the ISI, does have ties with the Haqqani militant group, but said these connections could be put to good use. The United States has accused the Pakistani ISI of supporting the Haqqani network in its recent attacks on U.S. targets. Imran Khan spoke in Islamabad. I do not think that ISI controls the Haqqani network. Yes, they would have connections with them. And if I was the United States, I would use this connection of the ISI with the Haqqani network to actually get them on, on the negotiating table. Because what does U.S. want now? An exit strategy. Because people in the U.S. have decided that they want the troops back. Uh, and this is according to all the polls. So ISI should basically use whatever connections it has with the Haqqani network to get them on, on the negotiating table, rather than what Americans are suggesting is to take them on, because then Pakistan loses all leverage. A new congressional report has confirmed the number of people living in poverty has increased across the United States. The poverty rate has increased in 46 states since 2007. The largest rises were in Nevada and Florida. The poverty rate remains highest in the South, where the number of people living swelled by 3.3 million people. The Occupy Wall Street protest in Lower Manhattan has entered its 11th day, as hundreds of people continue to camp out just blocks from Wall Street. On Monday night, filmmaker Michael Moore visited the protest encampment. Police have barred the protesters from using any form of public address system at the encampment, so the crowd repeated Michael Moore's comments. Whatever you do, don't despair, because this is the hard part. You're in the hard part right now. Whatever you do, don't Remember, 
months from now. Three months from now. Six months from now. Six months from now. A hundred years from now. In related news, The Guardian newspaper reports the senior New York police officer accused of pepper spraying young women during the peaceful Occupy Wall Street march on Saturday is the subject of a pending legal action over his conduct brought by a protester involved in the 2004 demonstrations at the Republican National Convention. The hacker collective Anonymous claimed responsibility Monday for posting the name of the officer, Anthony Bologna, online. An Israeli court has ordered the Israeli government to pay $430,000 to the family of a 10-year-old Palestinian girl who was shot dead by an Israeli border police officer. Abir Aramin died in 2007, when she was hit by rubber bullets while she was on her way to buy candy at a local store. No Israeli official has ever been charged in the killing. In other news from the region, Israel's released an Al Jazeera journalist after six weeks in detention without charge. Samar Alawi is Al Jazeera's bureau chief in Kabul. Israel accused him of having ties to Hamas. Samar Alawi spoke to reporters after being released. There was no evidence against me. They've arrested some people they claimed I supplied with important and dangerous information. But in the end, it was clear that I did nothing of this. After that, I was sure that the whole arrest thing was a charade, aiming to blackmail Al Jazeera, and I was not the target. Bolivian President Evo Morales has halted construction on a road project through a national park and indigenous land following more than a month of protests. A young child reportedly died from tear gas inhalation as police executed a harsh crackdown on demonstrators. The clashes came after a 41-day indigenous-led march against the government-supported plan to construct a highway connecting Brazil to Pacific ports in Chile and Peru. Bolivian Defense Minister Cecilio Chajon resigned in protest of the Morales administration's handling of the crackdown. Sebastian Quispe is an indigenous leader in Bolivia. The president is behaving exactly like our murderers, our oppressors. He should know that his people from the highlands, the indigenous people, are going to topple him. We are going to make him fall. More than 9,000 mining workers are continuing to strike at a massive gold and copper mine in West Papua owned by Freeport McMoran. Workers are threatening to stay off the job for a full month. The strike, which began on September 15th, just a month after thousands of people rallied in West Papua calling for independence from Indonesia after more than 40 years. In news from California, prisoners at Pelican Bay and other state prisons have resumed their hunger strike to protest against what they describe as inhumane prison conditions. Thousands of prisoners across the state went on a three-week hunger strike in July, but the protest ended after California prison officials agreed to make some changes to their policy of holding prisoners in long-term solitary confinement. Carol Strickman is an attorney working for legal services for prisoners with children. Since that time, we have seen uh, a few minor um, improvements, but the major improvements that CDCR is touting are a sham. And we know that, and the prisoners know that. Dorsey Nunn is a former prisoner and co-founder of All of Us or None. We've been receiving mail uh, probably since the inception of Pelican Bay that the conditions was horrendous. So like CDCR uh, have been violating human rights. Uh, this is not a matter of simply uh, a question of disciplinary action. They define uh, uh, their ability to torture based on the status of the human being there, as opposed to recognizing that torture is torture. It's not justifiable for anybody in this society. So you just can't simply say, that's a gang member and torture is permissible. Hundreds of demonstrators gathered in Vancouver, Canada, Monday, to protest a visit by former U.S. Pres Vice President Dick Cheney. Protesters called on Canadian authorities to arrest Cheney for war crimes and torture. 
revels in the fact that he was at the epicenter of organizing waterboarding, starlight tours, hot and cold, stress positions, electrocutions, you name it, Dick is there. Millions of people have died at the behest of Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney needs to be put on trial to his own admissions. In other news from Canada, 117 demonstrators were arrested in Ottawa Monday after trying to enter the House of Commons during a demonstration against the proposed Keystone XL tar sands pipeline project. Meanwhile, in Washington, Republican Senator Rand Paul single-handedly blocking legislation to strengthen safety rules for oil and gas pipelines, even though the bill has support from the Interstate Natural Gas Association of America, the American Gas Association, and the Association of Oil Pipelines. Senator Senator Paul reportedly opposes the bill because he sees it as a form of unnecessary federal regulation. Animal rights activists are claiming responsibility for setting a fire at a fur retailer in Caldwell, Idaho, early Monday. The fire occurred at the Rocky Mountain Fireworks and Fur Company, a company that buys coyote and bobcat pelts and sells trapping supplies. And members of Wangari Maathai's Green Belt Movement vowed to continue with the late activist work following the death of the group's 71-year-old founder. In 1977, Maathai spearheaded the struggle against state-backed deforestation in Kenya and founded the Green Belt Movement, which has planted some 45 million trees in the country. Wangari Maathai won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004. Nijiri Gakonyo is a member of the board of directors of Green Belt Movement. This organization is fully functional and able to continue with this important work and the mission of making sure that we as human beings look after the environment that feeds us, that clothes us, that looks after us in so many ways. So Prof's work will continue and we really want to reassure you that we at the Green Belt Movement are committed to continuing this. Wangari Mathai died at the age of 71 of cancer in her home country of Kenya on Sunday. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman, and I'm joined by Democracy Now!'s Nirmeen Sheikh, who is co-hosting today. Thank you, Amy. And welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world.